Attic Mall Studios. This is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Robin, you have a new grandson. Yes, I do. You're a grandma for the first time ever. Yes, I am. Now, can you imagine the world he's being born into? This is this is a different world than the one we grew up in, right? It is. Um, one of the big differences is these little things that we hold in our hands called phones. Right? Yeah. You ever, you ever see the kids? They all they have them. We went to Disney World. Kids kids have digital devices, yeah, right? Yeah, they're four years old and they've <laughs> got them in their hand. I know. So the, I don't know that that's good or bad. I just know it's different, right? And mm-hmm. the one thing we've heard about is um, you know some of the interaction with, with the other kids that's not necessarily always positive. You know, they might be bullying, cyber bullying. What the heck? <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I can't even imagine that this is... A big problem, but I know it is because we've well we speak to people all the time. So what do you do? You you have a son and a daughter in law. Now they're going to raise a brand new human being, and and it's in this world, and uh, and they're more savvy. Your children are more savvy, I guess, than you and I are, and it's probably the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Diana Graber is on the phone. She is a digital literacy educator and an advocate, and she's the founder of something called CyberWise and Cyber Civics. She's the recipient of the National Association for Media Literacy Education, Media Literacy Teacher Award, and she's written a book. It's called Raising Humans in a Digital World, Helping Kids Build a Healthy Relationship with Technology. This is what we've been looking for. Good morning, Diana Graber. It's an honor to have you on our show. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. So Robin says you're on the West Coast. Where are you? Um, I'm actually just south of Los Angeles in a little town called Capistrano Beach. Oh, okay. How's the weather? Oh, it must be nice, huh? That's oh. nice. It's cold, though. I mean, you know, it's 50, so we're freezing. So <laughs> 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 well, we're in Florida, and we have Florida weather right now. So, so You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. I, I, I do. <laughs> yeah, I love Southern California, too, though. Uh, so this is so on target. I mean, this is such a big issue. I mean, when we were kids, and, and I don't want to tell you how old we are, but we're 64, and yeah. But anyway, so I, I can remember when I was a kid, and, and maybe nobody likes this advice, but my father would say, just punch him in the nose. That was that was the answer to being bullied, right? Just punch yeah. him in the nose. I don't think I ever did, but I remember that was, the, and you can't tell that anymore. You can't even tell it in a physical world. You can't say somebody's being bullied, right? So does the book help the, uh, the parent uh, figure out what to tell the children? Well, yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point, because if you were to tell a child to, bull- to punch somebody in the nose online, what happens is that goes online, it's there forever, yeah. it's permanent, and anybody can see it. So, you know, it, it, it comes back to haunt the bully for many, many years. So mm-hmm. that's not, an, you know, things are really different now, and it, it, we do have to parent our children a little differently and prepare them for a world where they really can't make the mistakes that we made. And at the same time, if you take it away... The the uh, the world is so interconnected. I mean, I'm even using my phone to pay for my subway sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, they. You know, phones are a part of their world. It's just what it is. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't. You know, kind of launch them a little bit slowly into that world. I, you know, there's a lot of skills I think that kids uh-huh. need to develop in the real world before they start interacting with faceless, nameless others online. Okay. So give us some guidelines. What should, is there an age? Where it's more appropriate. I, I know that all of my ne- my nephew's children are not on Facebook except for the older ones. Mm-hmm. So all of the children that I, I have in my family are not on Facebook except for maybe one or two that have reached seventeen years old or mm-hmm. sixteen. Yeah. So I, well, I I'm guess good. yeah, I'm guessing my family <laughs> that's has unusual. <laughs> yeah. Well it's not from me, it's from the <laughs> it's, yeah. it's from the younger one. So I mean is that a is that a good role uh, not role model, what am I trying to say? A good example or a good Rule of thumb, well, maybe that's you know what. every every. So let me say this: every child and every family is different. 
that being said, most of the social ne- media networks that you're talking about, Instagram, Facebook, um, all of those, require kids to be at least 13 uh, years of age to join. Oh, okay. But, I didn't know that. But that being said, it's really easy for a kid to go on like Snapchat or Twitter or uh, it, even Instagram and put in a fake birth date and presto, they have an account. So I think that's a lot of the reason why we're seeing problems on these networks is there's so many young kids that go on before they've really developed those social skills or more importantly, ethical thinking skills that will help them navigate a world that's full of decisions that are very important to make. And uh, that's up to the parents to be the guide because the the parents have to first instill the values in the child. And if they let their children run amok, I mean, the children are going to do whatever it is they want to do and not have any values. Right. And, you know, it's it's a function of the parents, but also I kind of put a little bit of the onus on the schools. Um, one of the things I do is I teach a, a course called Cyber Civics, which is a digital literacy series of lessons to middle school students. And, you know, this is a big world for kids. And I think schools have a little bit of a responsibility to teach kids how to be literate in the online world as much as they do in the other world. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean, it's hard for parents because we did not grow up in this. But you, if you can get kids to have these lessons in schools, you have the advantage of them learning with their peers. And when they learn with their peers, they establish these social norms they take together to the online world. And that's super powerful because then they start understanding the consequences of their actions. They look out for each other. They kind of have these new rules that, that they set and they right. carry forth in worlds where we're not, you know. And uh, this uh, technology will follow them when they grow up and go to apply for jobs. They'll, you know, they could be a most upstanding citizen but maybe in their uh, teen years, they got a little crazy and did some stupid things, put it on the Internet. And like you said earlier, it's going to be there forever. And maybe their job, per- their, their job boss isn't going to hire them. Right. And we're seeing examples of that all the time, aren't we? You know, these, these professional athletes or all kinds of people that are having these past posts coming to haunt them. Um, and that's something that I help parents with in the book is I give them actual activities that they can do together as a family at home to sort of teach kids the consequences of their online actions before, it, before they go online and make a terrible mistake that might haunt them later. Yeah, yeah. So let's say you have a child and your child is following the rules that you've laid down and all of his or her friends are, are, are following the rules and so none of them are engaging in any of this stuff. But then there's the bad guy. <laughs> then there's the bad kid who nobody taught him how to behave. And, and he's kind of getting under their skin and really ruffling some feathers with his be- online behavior. How do you handle that? That's maybe my best question right there. Yeah, that's a great question because that's the other feature that's so wonderful about the online life is that people can tag you. And so what that means, if that so-called bad guy tags you in one of his or her photos, that actually impacts your own digital reputation. So, you know, we talk about this in the classroom, too, with the kids. And, you know, the best advice that I can give a child is choose your online friends wisely. You know, and, even more wisely than your offline friends, probably. And you also advocate for times to be away from their phones and the technology, like to have, you know, leave them home or turn them totally off, put them in their back pocket or their, their uh, bag and, you know, go out and do social activities. Uh, you give examples like walk the dog or, or when you're eating. That's hard for a kid to do because, you know, our phones are really designed to capture our attention. There's a lot of mechanisms in there that make it super hard for any of us to put them down. So the other piece of advice I give is for parents to model this. I mean, kids know it's hard and they see us struggling with it, but that if they do see adults around them being able to turn that phone off at key times, family times, you know, that's a modeling thing that's really important for kids to see. The book is called uh, Raising Humans in the Digital World, Helping Kids Build a Healthy Relationship with Technology. If you're looking at the streaming video we're doing right now, the cover of the book is on there. And I got that off of Amazon. I'm just saying that so you can uh, go on Amazon and get the book. And I notice it's available as an audio book as well as a paperback and even a Kindle. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the audio book, by the way. I listen to it in the car. So, <laughs> so who who do you um, who is the book for? Is it for the parent? Um, it's primarily for parents, um, but I think teachers can really gain a lot by reading it as well. Anyone who is around a digital kid, which is all of us, really, 
um, would gain insight into what they're going through growing up in this world and also to get tips on how they can help kids be really great humans in a really challenging world. At least in our community, uh, our uh, public school system, if there are some children that um, whose parents can't afford uh, this uh, technology so the children take them home, the schools make available to the children uh, so they can assign their courses on uh, online their homework their uh, even the books they they read over the the breaks during the school year right right i mean that's the thing you know kids have access to technology everywhere now it's not even if their parents don't supply it i mean most schools now have kids on devices doing their homework doing their schoolwork it's everywhere uh sexting is a very broad uh word there because to some sexting may just be like uh, shooting a moon to somebody or the other one is just you know just going all out how do you bring up that conversation well you know number one we'll just think about what kids are going through you know when as kids reach their preteen teen years it's natural to have interest in the opposite sex right and now that happens at the same time when they have a connected device in their hand so that's why sexting happens um it's it, so put, putting that aside it's important to let kids know what the consequences are of getting caught sexting and they're very serious and you get in as much trouble for receiving an unwanted sex message as you do sending one so that's a discussion that's super important to have with your child the moment you put a connected device in their hand because you don't want your kid to be the one that someone sends them a nudie and all of a sudden they're you know in trouble with law enforcement yeah right so is there a uh, like a technological filter for that is, is there something like that well, you know, that's a great question. There, there are some parental control software out there, but it's real, that's a real hard thing to block. You know what I mean? So the best thing to do really is to teach kids how to use the best filter in the world, and mm-hmm. that's the one they carry around between their ears. <laughs> and right, again, right. It goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. again, it goes back to choosing your friends wisely, having right. those discussions with kids to let them know. I mean, it is very serious to get caught sexting. It, it, the laws are different in every state, but in some states, kids actually get put on the sexual offenders list. I know here in California, it's immediate suspension from school. <laughs> So, you know, these are really huge consequences. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So the, yeah. we, we use a, a website called Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. Have you heard of this website? I, ha- I have heard of that. And it's yes. got questions. Sometimes it's like talking points and stimulating conversation. And I, I went to it, I think it was just yesterday. And, uh, I mean, there was a really graphic photo on there. Wow. And I thought, whoa, is yeah. that supposed to be there? I don't know how that could be there. It didn't even mm-hmm. seem to relate to the question that was on there. Uh, Isn't it crazy? It's just there. Well, oh, this morning we were looking up James Bond. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we brought and we we broadcast near a window, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you were seven years old and you were googling and you ran across those photos. Oh you know? gosh, I mean, yeah. Uh, or yeah. yeah. This is the other thing is kids are seeing that kind of imagery at really young ages. So I mean, that's another great reason to really try to hold off devices as long as you can i mean kids are just not ready for that kind of stuff when i was a kid if that had, if i had lived in today's age okay what would have happened to me is i would have been going to see james bond okay and i that picture would have come up and i would have said oh my gosh i gotta get this off the screen and my dad would open the door at that moment larry time to eat what are you looking at <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no I, that would have been me right. i would have been the kid who everybody yeah. thought was looking at it right <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It happens. <laughs> I I love how you say that technology is just a tool. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, we have to be smarter than our tools. And, and that's really what I'm trying to help parents do is to have these little tricks and tips that they can keep up their sleeve to help their kids be a little smarter than the tools in their hands because, you know, we should be able to master them. They shouldn't be mastering us. And I think that we can. You know, again, all of us grew up in an era where we didn't have any training on how to be, you know, smart with our tools. And I think that we have enough knowledge now where we can equip our kids to do better. 
And then you also embrace the realm of creativity. In our uh, uh, Marion County Public School System, we have an event every year called the Student Media Festival. And students from eight, from kindergarten through uh, their senior year in high school, they're encouraged to go out and uh, think of topics on their own and produce videos. And then they go on to state competitions and national competitions with this. So uh, they have to have some of this technology to enhance their creativity. Right. That's a great, what a great project. And, and that's um, something else I talk a lot about is helping our children become wonderful producers and participants of a digital world rather than just mindless consumers. And what I mean by that is that if we don't equip our kids with these skills, sometimes they have these really powerful tools in their hands and they'll just use it to, you know, watch YouTube video after YouTube video right, or, right, right. you know, just mindless things, forgetting that they have this power to create wonderful videos yeah. or to blog or to do really great things. And yeah. so that's, that's really what I'm trying to get to here is it's not all bad. You it, know, yeah, you yeah, start I, kids to use it well and they can make wonderful things and enhance their lives. And just to piggyback on the point you and Robin are making, we had in this studio a young girl she was a student at one of the local schools and she came in here with her art teacher and her art was unbelievable and uh, but she was not she didn't use traditional media she used a digital uh thing and and uh and i was thinking to myself that well this is the new world this is like you know when we were younger i, I was into music and i i can remember when that all started to blossom and i i was messing with digital music uh what do you call it like synth synthetic sounds right mm -hmm. you know so you didn't really have a violin in the room but it sounded like it and i and i guess it does expand our ability to be creative so there are a lot of good things about the new world Right. You know, one of the um, really great interviews I was able to do for my book is a woman who writes a series of books called Guardian Herd for pre-teenagers. Mm -hmm. And what I learned is her, her readers, which are, you know, mostly young girls, are so engaged with the books that they go online, they create beautiful art that they share with each other, you know, around the book topics. They write blog posts around the book topics. And not only are they able to be creative, they're able to share that creativity with other fans of the book. Oh, which nice. It's really incredible. I mean, we didn't get to do that when we were young. So th that's just an example of one of the positive ways yeah, that yeah. kids are using this technology. Oh, it can be. We, I, I got a little example that we did here at the beginning of the holiday season. Robin and I created a Facebook group and, and it was just for people to post videos of themselves playing Christmas songs. And I was so reluctant because, well, quite frankly, we get a lot of negative stuff. Like when we do it, one of these interviews, like the one we're doing right now, somebody <laughs> somebody could post something underneath right. that, you know, you two were talking too much or whatever. Yeah. They'll, they'll always say something. So I was really reluctant to do it, thinking that, okay, somebody's going to say you're no good or, or get a day job or whatever. But everybody was so well-behaved. It was such a great experience. Um, so I, I think it can be a very, very good thing. I think the, the digital world is not necessarily the devil. Right. And, and I, again, when you think about kids online, when they make mistakes – that's a kid's job to make a mistake, and that's how they learn. But hopefully we want them to make those mistakes in a place that's not so public and permanent. And that's why we want them to practice these social, emotional, human skills in the real life first. And when they're ready, put them online where they're going to be a little smarter, safer, and wiser. And the video games have evolved from being a player with your game system attached to your television set to... Uh, playing this game over the internet with people all over the world and there has to be some kind of uh, uh, protocol for this and some kind of respect on each of the players part not to get carried away but to be kind to each other even though they might be playing a shoot 'em up game <laughs> it sounds a little oxymoric doesn't it <laughs> yeah yeah right right uh, maybe uh, let me, I want to share with the listeners some of the, the reviews that you have. Um, the book, again, is called uh, Raising Humans in a Digital World, uh, Helping Kids Build a Healthy Relationship with Technology. If you're a teacher, a parent, a grandparent, I, I think this will help you understand what the children are going through right now um, so that we can, in, instead of trying to instill upon them some of the uh, some of the ways that helped us when we were younger, maybe we need to start thinking more like the, the modern world. And so I found it on Amazon. Where was one of the reviews I wanted to read? Um, 
Oh, my gosh. Here it is. Uh, if you need practical, positive advice on how to handle your and your kids' digital lives, look no further. This book tackles the risks and addresses the potential harms while keeping our eyes on the prize of the remarkable rewards that the online world brings. I think that sums up everything we've said in this interview. Yeah, I hope I hope that it helps parents get to that point because that's really my goal here is to lay out the world that our kids are living in, yeah. take the fear away, and give them practical steps to get their kids to a place where they're using technology. Yeah, that was from the Family Online Safety Institute, mm -hmm. by the way. Do you have to run? Was that a was that a, a cue from your your publicist? No, <laughs> no I'm all. Alone. I'm, a, I'm still I'm still on my first cup of caffeine here. So. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, the 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 backyard per se of the people, your own living in your own backyard is now infinite because with the internet and was able to and was being able to speak over the internet uh, that really everybody's exposed to different cultures and I think that's being more embraced now. Everybody underst is trying to understand now what each culture has and respect each other. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing that's so wonderful is having kids, you know, that sometimes can't find their group or their people that they relate to in their own communities can go online and find interest groups that share their passions or their interests or even their quirks online. So mm -hmm. there's so many great examples of that, of kids who are able to open up their world and learn new things, really? new wonderful things online. So I have a question, and uh, I'm just curious. The, does the new world of technology... Uh, steal a child's uh, experience of the outdoors? Are they still camping and bicycling and, and water skiing? And, and are they still doing a lot of outdoor stuff? Or has this stolen some of that time away from them? Boy, I, I would love to say that it hasn't. But in my unofficial surveys <laughs> with kids that I teach, teach, I think it has. You know, I think hmm. kids do not go outside as much as they used to and then participate in outdoor activities. And I can't really blame the devices for that because some of it is just parental fears of letting our kids be alone outside. So it's kind of where society yeah. has come today. Yeah, maybe. Um, you don't really see kids. I mean, drive by a high school, you don't see bikes in the in the lot like you used to when we were kids. So society has changed in that respect. Hmm. Well, maybe we can just maybe that would be a parental decision. Like, let, you don't have to have them out alone. Say, let's go to the beach and throw a frisbee. Or let's exactly. We we have some old railroad uh, beds here that were torn up, and they, they made them into bicycle paths. They're beautiful. So the yeah, egg could yeah do rails that. to trails really yeah, nice. Yeah, that's what they call them. Uh, yeah, oh. that's one of the things I do with the um, the kids I teach is I actually make them go on a twenty four hour digital media vacation. They can't use their devices for twenty four hours, and then they have to write a paragraph on how they survived. <laughs> and, you know, but I mean, it's it really brings tears to your eyes when you read what these kids write. They write things like, "Wow, I, I rode my bike," or "I went to the beach," or. Gosh, I talked to my sister. You know? <laughs> yeah, right, it's right. like they're discovering a whole new world that oh they didn't gosh. even know existed. Well, maybe as parents, we need to organize things like dog washes. I can, yeah. remember, I can remember wanting to, uh, to do. We had a, used to have a paper drive at my church, and I hated it. I have to go mm -hmm. down there. But when I actually got there, it was fun because I was hanging out with all these kids, just grabbing paper mm -hmm. from people who were bringing it in. and. Mm -hmm. uh, what was one of the unexpected things that you found in your research when you were compiling your book? Well, I think th I think I've actually learned a lot more from being with real kids and reading research, to tell you the truth. I and bet. the thing that I'm learning from the children, because I've been teaching this digital literacy now for almost 10 years, is honestly I see the pendulum swinging. I think kids are realizing that these devices are super <laughs> addictive and they want to go out and, and be human again. They're starting to realize that they need help putting the devices down and trying to, d to find another way. And I know that sounds really pie in the sky, but it's what I'm seeing with kids and I, I feel like with a little bit of help and urging from us we can start helping these kids learn how to have a balance between their online and offline lives. Let's hope so. Yeah, that sounds like really optimistic, uh, an optimistic uh, prognosis of the future. Uh, D Diana, thank you for being on the show with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And uh, let's see, I found it on Amazon. Do you, do you have a different website you want to direct us to? Uh, well, there's also a website called uh, www.raisinghumansinadigitalworld.com. Oh, okay, that's easy enough. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thanks so much. We'll Have be, a great day. We'll be right back. Hi, 
I'm Anthony with Finishing Touch Floors. Are you considering covering your old wood floors? Forget about it. Let Finishing Touch Floors restore your old wood floors. We offer sanding, refinishing, installation, and custom colored stains. With over 35 years experience, you need to call 321-396-2600.